minutes. As soon as you've added your water, put the kettle down and grab your brewer and begin to swirl in a circular motion. Hi, that was James Hoffman, a World Barista Champion and the creator of the Ultimate V60 Technique. James Hoffman's recipe is one of my favorite pour over coffee techniques and I'm excited to make a robot today that's going to help me make this coffee every day. Don't get me wrong, I do enjoy making James Hoffman's recipe, but sometimes I get impatient and I'm just not that good at doing the whole swirling, pouring, reading and coordinating thing. So it would be nice to have a robot to fall back to when I'm lazy. Welcome back to Cool Code Sleep, where I make robots help me be the best home cook that I can be. Today, we'll be making a pour over coffee robot and let's get started with the things that we need to make. One, we're going to need a way to pour hot water into the coffee. Two, we're going to need a way to swirl the V60 carafe so that we get the perfect bloom at the beginning and the perfect flatbed at the end. Three, we're going to need a way to measure the amount of water that we've poured so we know when we've hit those set points in the recipe. Lastly, we're going to need a central software that does all the coordination so I don't have to think about anything. To pump hot water, I'll be using this homebrew pump here, which is safe to use even for hot boiling water. It only has two modes, on and off, so I'll be going over later in the video how I managed to meet the desired flow rates. And this pump connects to our main platform, which I 3D printed, so let's open it up and see what's inside. So in here, as we see, the pump connects to this relay, which allows us to control the 12 volt circuit of the pump using the weaker signal coming from Arduino. When the signal is on, the pump is on. Next up, we've got the shaker, which allows us to swirl the V60 carafe so that we have that nice bloom at the beginning. And also closer to the end, we can perturb the bed of the coffee so we have a nice flat bed at the end of the drawdown. Powering this rotation is a stepper motor here, which is driven by this stepper motor driver. The stepper motor driver is connected to the Arduino, and once powered, we can control the stepper motor to run at different speeds. Having different speeds is important because we'll need a relatively higher speed during the blooming phase, we'll need a lower speed during regular pouring, and a higher speed again towards the end to create a flat bed. The design for this overall platform is an adaptation of something that I found on Thingiverse, and I'll post a link in the description below. Finally, we've got the scale, which we'll be using to measure the amount of water poured. I've hacked open my own kitchen scale here, and inside we see these four strain gauges. To be able to read the signal from these strain gauges, I've soldered these connections here. Externally, I've connected these connections to this board here, which among other things, converts the analog signal from the strain gauges to the digital format that I can read from the Arduino. Now that we have the mechanical capability to pour water, shake the platform, and measure the amount of water that we've poured, all we need to do is convert James's recipe into a sequence of set points that a software can process and execute step by step. And a uh, shout out to Peter here, one of James's viewers, for transcribing the recipe into a sequence of set points. I'll be using these set points as a reference in designing my software program. So I've coded up an Arduino program that will take these set points that I've kind of translated from James Hoffman's video. What we see here are specific weights at specific times and some extra information about what rate to spin the platform at. You'll notice that I have a few more states than in James's recipe, but most of these differ by spin speeds, and they're there to facilitate the transition from different phases of the pour. Alright, with the hardware and software set, let's put this thing to the test. To the top left here, we see the current phase that the coffee robot is in. And we'll begin with the bloom phase, where for every gram of coffee grounds, we aim to pour 2 grams of water. Here, I'm using 15 grams of coffee grounds, so as we see in the plot to the bottom left, we're aiming to pour 30 grams of water. However, we've overshot this, and we've already poured 45 grams of water. This is still within James's recommendation, since he says we can pour up to 3 grams of water per gram of coffee used. At the 30 second mark, we enter the next phase, where over the next 30 seconds, we aim to pour up to 150 grams of water. Here, we want a uniform flow rate, represented by the red line. And since my pump doesn't allow me to control the flow rate, I've designed a controller such that 
Whenever the blue line, the current amount of water poured, falls under the red line, the pump is activated and we pump a little more water. And because the pump is inherently capable of pumping faster than the red line, we see this zigzag pattern form where whenever the pump pours, the blue line is steeper than the red line and it flattens out once the controller deactivates the pouring again. We see the same behavior at the beginning during the blooming phase where the blue line is steeper than the red line. And because of the delays there are in my control loops, we, we see the overshoot behavior both during the beginning at the bloom phase and also here at the end where we actually poured roughly 270 grams of water instead of 250. Once all the water is poured, we slow down the craft speed for just a bit so that some of the water can drain. Right after, we speed up the carafe spin speed again so that we can start swirling the bed of coffee. This is what gives us that nice flat bed at the end of the drawdown. And finally, let's see what it tastes like. Ah, good beans.